liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Good morning. I'd like to call our meeting to order. We'll begin with the approval of minutes for April 28th. Is everybody here? Charlie, I think you were absent, so. Motion to approve. I need a second. Second. I have a first and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 3-0. Commissioner's reports and comments. Commissioner Kiefer, would you begin, sir? Sure. Uh, just a couple of things. Over the weekend, I had an opportunity to visit the town of Clear Spring for their 200th anniversary celebration, and I th thought in spite of the rain, they had a great turnout, and that was a, a well-orchestrated event. I love the passport where you got to go and visit the different businesses and nonprofits in town. Just kudos to the town council and um, the Historical Society and all the businesses that participated and nonprofits that were part of it. Also, um, I had not so much the pleasure of filling up my vehicle, a uh, truck with a full tank of gas, and it cost nearly $100. And um, I grumbled about it a little bit, but I do realize maybe I'm a little more fortunate than many others to, to be able to pay for that. Um, if anyone's looking for something to do locally, we have so many great things here in Washington County to go see, businesses to visit, um, places to shop, uh, just neat curiosities throughout Washington County. And I was reminded of that on my drive-in this morning. What a beautiful fall day we have. I think tomorrow will be an, another nice day as well. In my rear view mirror, I could see the cut in Sidling Hill Mountain. And um, right around the huge crossroads exit, I could see South Mountain quite visible ahead of me. And I was just thinking of all the things that we have to do here in Washington County. We have trails. Fall is a perfect time of year to, to do that, take some trails. We have some fishing opportunities in the Potomac River and many of our streams and creeks. Uh, I think some areas have been stocked recently with some fall trout and um, biking paths and, and just some great businesses to visit. So in spite of the high gas prices, um, if anyone chooses to do something locally, we have plenty of opportunities and you can save a little bit on gas for these next few years. That's all. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Burkett. Um, it's been so long since my last meeting. This feels like my first meeting. Um, I went out of town with some family to visit my son uh, in New York and my daughter in Vermont. I uh, haven't seen her for two years because of COVID, and so I had a nice time away. Um, right before I left, we, uh, a couple of the commissioners and um, County Administrator John went to uh, the election board and we did a walk through there. Um, since coming back, I've been involved in several business meetings and met a number of local business owners, uh, including attending the Farm Bureau's annual meeting, uh, <clears throat> which was included my first toast using a bottle of milk. Uh, so that was interesting. Uh, I, along with uh, Commissioner Wagner and Klein, attended the meeting of the Longmeadow Volunteer uh, Company celebrating their 50th anniversary, and we presented them with a citation and then honored uh, their longest charter member, Sam Murray. Uh, and, and then recently, over the last week, attended uh, several ribbon cuttings, including uh, J.P. Minnow Coffee, who uh, opened up a second location out at Prime Outlets. And then just yesterday, we were in Smithburg uh, congratulating Tess, uh, who worked at the Dixie Diner for the past five years and then purchased that diner. Uh, to keep it open, and uh, she celebrated that with her workers, and a lot of people showed up for that. Uh, so we wish both of those businesses much success here in Washington County. And then also, I was just made aware this morning uh, that our county clerk, Krista Hart, uh, celebrated 25 years with the county on Friday, and so we just congratulate her uh, on her service to the county. Congratulations. Hey, good morning. Uh, there was a lot of things going on the last three weeks. Uh, there was uh, numerous ribbon cuttings, uh, business functions. Uh, I mean, first double ribbon cutting in Smithburg. I've ever been to a double ribbon cutting. Same location, two different businesses. Uh, they did have the MDOT meeting we attended, and uh, 
That was very well focused on 81. The theme was 81. It's about time, you know, somebody stood up here and, and President Klein gave good presentation. Scott did a wonderful job of organizing that MDOT meeting uh, and staff that were there to assist. So I thank you, Scott, for putting that all together because I think we made an impact. We'll see. So I won't read all the functions went on. You can go to Facebook and find them all. So. Uh, on a more serious note, uh, on October 5th at, at the city council meeting, at, if you go to 24 minutes and start watching, Jim Klein, I call him Pint, and he had a couple uh, friends there supporting Ron Motes and uh, Richard Hembrock. All Vietnam uh, era people, I'm a Vietnam era people, I was not in Vietnam, but I was in that era, 68 to 72. They proposed, uh, at the Vietnam Memorial to put, bring in a UH-1, a Huey helicopter, which was the workhorse of Vietnam. It carried a lot of wounded out, carried a lot of dead out. He's been trying to acquire one and mount it back in the tree line in the air. Well, I was very, and, I'm, and believe me, I'm not throwing stones, but I was very disappointed. Maybe I'm throwing stones. I was very disappointed at the reception they got requesting the city council to look at that. I think me personally, I saw it as a slap in the face to veterans. I think every veteran in the county ought to go forward and write a letter to the city council, tell them to reconsider. They didn't say no. Uh, but some of the remarks were uh, helicopter not adding value to the park, the character doesn't match. Well, that's one of the nicest memorials in Washington County, if not the nicest. If nobody's visiting on Walnut Street, it's beautiful. Jim Klein got no uh, rewards for doing that. He spent a couple of several, I guess two or three years of his life building that, raising funds. So if you haven't seen it, it's beautiful. I just wish the city council would reconsider that. That's a very important Washington County. I don't see where it would take away the aesthetics. They said, well, maybe it'd be better at Marty Snook. Well, that's not where the Vietnam Memorial is. You know, back at the tree line, virtually hidden. So I think people ought to voice their opinion to the city council. I, I just don't think in my opinion, as a veteran, now a lot, they're younger, a lot of them, that they got the whole meaning of why this helicopter was important. That's, that was my point. So it's irritated me since that, so I thought I'd bring it up. If you want to hear it in your own judgment, October 5th meeting at 24-minute mark, I'd, I'd encourage everybody to go watch it and then ask city council to, to help out a little bit, a better reception. They did not say no, I'll give them that. But it didn't sound that great to me. But anyway, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, Krista, congratulations on 25. Um, there were a lot of events over the past several weeks, and one of the most important to me was the Step and Stride breast cancer event at the college. For those who don't know, my mom had a doctor's appointment with Dr. Cheney about 25 years ago and accidentally, for another reason, discovered that mom had two <coughs> lumps, one in each breast, and probably gave her another 25 years in life before Alzheimer's took her. So there was a lot of survivors, a lot of positive energy out there at the event. And Stacy Hurst did an excellent job organizing the car parade and the walk. And for all those breast survivors and the support people they have, thank you for your courage. Uh, on a sad note, the county did lose an employee of 30 years recently due to an illness. His name, I believe, was Tim Dorsey. So keep him and his family in your thoughts. And I, too, attended the MDOT presentation at the library, and I believe under John Montrano and Scott, we've sent a letter to Secretary Slater for an in-person meeting to, again, put forth our demand, our request, our need, our urgency. For those who are familiar with 81, with today's apps on your phone, when they see a detour on 81, they invade Pennsylvania Avenue, they invade Williamsport, they upset our whole community when that road has not been widened and the, due to the amount of access. So I hope we do get that face-to-face -face meeting so we can continue to push that as one of our top priorities. And I do remind anyone that's listening, it's been our top priority for 12 years. It's time that we do Interstate 81 today. With that being said, <laughs> that concludes my remarks. We now will go forward with staff comments. Any staff want to come forward? Scott, I have you and Todd and Susan listed for today. Good morning. 
Good morning, Scott Hobbs, Director of Engineering. Um, as you mentioned, we had our MDOT tour meeting uh, last week. Um, had people up from State Highway, Aviation, Transit. Uh, as a follow-up to that meeting, uh, we're, like you said, uh, look to have a meeting with the Secretary of Transportation. The Deputy Secretary was in town when we discussed uh, everything in ID1, everything in ID1. I'm here to request the consensus to send a letter of support from the commissioners for a grant opportunity that's being led by Berkeley County Development Authority along with coalition partners. The group is applying for an Economic Development Administration American Rescue Plan Build Back Better Regional Challenge Grant, which will support the advancement of manufacturing, innovative logistics, workforce development, and regional economic growth along the ID1 corridor. Information about the Halfway Boulevard Extended Project would be added to the grant application, and the group is also seeking letters of support from various companies in the area, such as Volvo and Bowman. The program is designed to assist communities nationwide in their efforts to build back better by accelerating the economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and to revitalize local economies with a vision to build and scale a strategic industry cluster. The grant opportunity is presented in two phases. The phase deadline is today. Phase two deadline is in March. We received some information about this from Berkeley County last week. It's an economic development administrative grant. Uh, for the phase one application, 50 to 60 regional coalitions of partnering entities will be awarded approximately $500,000 in technical assistance funds to develop and support three to eight projects to grow a region growth cluster. For the phase two application, economic development uh, will be awarded 20 to 30 regional coalitions, 25 to $75 million and up to 100 million to implement those projects. So the Economic Development Administration, again, is, is heading this project. So with that, as again, a follow-up to ID1, this is another grant opportunity. We're continuing to discuss with the state uh, highway administration, MDOT, about um, seeking as much as they can in other grant funding to move this project forward with the phases and widening of ID1. Permission for a letter of support, is that what you're asking for? Yes, a consensus to send the letter of support for this phase one consensus project. Yeah, that's, that's fine with me. Absolutely. Or not. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Continuing with staff reports. Susan here or someone from Susan's office or Todd. Thank you. Here we go. Thank you, Scott. Please introduce yourself in the matter, Todd. Todd Moser, Real Property Administrator. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. I don't know if we have a map up here. There we go. MDOT has declared a service road off of Maryland 68 and Clear Spring a surplus property. Prior to the sale of the property to the public, the property is offered to the county for fair market value. County staff has found prop the property is no benefit uh, to the county now or in the future. The adjacent property owner at 12909 Clear Spring Road has agreed to purchase the property from the state. Um, I'm just looking for a consensus to decline the acquisition of the property. And this is, as said, just a service road consisting of 21,540 square feet. I agree. Or second, or yes, consensus. There you go, you got four consensus Thanks. to support. You. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Okay, Susan or Rachel, please introduce yourself in the matter. Good morning, Rachel Salado, senior grant manager, office of grant management. I have with me Megan Willis of the day reporting center. Um, I apologize, first of all, for coming during staff comments for something that should be an agenda item, but the grants office just received notice of this last week. So due to the fact that the application is due on the 22nd, this was necessary to obtain approval. The day reporting center would like to, um, they're requesting approval so that they may submit an application and accept awarded funding from the governor's office of crime prevention, youth and victim services for the Detention Center's pre-trial services program. 
Um, this grant would run for a six month period starting in January and ending June 30th, starting January 1st and ending June 30th. The total amount requested is $87,511.95. Um, there is no match required from the county. Um, I think that's everything. You're yeah. looking for a motion to to submit and, and accept if awarded? Is yes, that sir. what you want? Yes. Right. I need this form, so. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. I have first and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 To make the application and to accept if awarded. Correct? Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other staff in the audience? Seeing none, Mr. Downey. Actually, I think Jill has. Jill, I'm sorry. Jill, please introduce yourself and matter when ready. Thank you for wiping your area. Good morning, commissioners. Um, I think presented to you is a proposed resolution of adoption for the solid waste management and recycling plan. You'll recall a few weeks ago that the members here approved that document. Um, we're required to update that every 10 years. Um, when we submitted that to the state of Maryland, um, they had actually have changed their rules a little bit and have actually required us now to do a resolution rather than just a straight up adoption. So um, the county attorney's office has been gracious enough to draft that for us. I believe that's in front of you now. We're simply requesting you to approve that resolution um, so that we can formally get this document approved by the state. Yeah, again, this is uh, something that was approved um, after a public hearing on August 17th by the commissioners. Uh, this is just a formal formal resolution adopting and enacting it so that it can be submitted to the state for their review and approval. Do you need a motion to approve the former approval? A motion to adopt a resolution adopting the 2022 to 2031 solid waste and recycling plan for Washington County. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. A second, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Four, oh, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Any other staff in the gallery? If not, Mr. Downey, anything from you? Yes, good morning, Commissioners. We have received a request from uh, Senator Quarterman to um, provide letters of support for several capital budget funding requests that he is submitting to the um, Secretary of the Maryland Department of Budget and Management. He's asking first for uh, funding support for the town of Boonesboro's water reservoir uh, replacement project. Uh, the water reservoir in Boonesboro uh, was built in 1954 has suffered certain uh, repair problems and is um, currently leaking uh, treated water. Uh, this, this facility needs to be upgraded and replaced as this is the source of water for both the town of Boonesboro and the town of Keatesville. He's asking that uh, funding uh, towards the project be provided for out of the governor's capital budget in the upcoming year. He'd like a letter of support from the commissioners. Is, is this a, a county delegation bill or an individual bill sponsored by him separate of the delegation? The request is coming from Senator Quarterman. So it's not a county delegation request? Not at this point. The request for our support came from Senator Quarterman. I would prefer myself to take these individually instead of as a group. I don't even know what's on that list, but do one each individually if you're asking for a consensus. Just for this one. He's just got one right now. Oh, is that the only one? Yeah, there's two. There, there are, oh, okay. Well, there are two, but, he's, but he's only talking about one. At the oh, I thought you said several, but maybe. Yeah. There are, so there are, there's well, I'm going to present the other one next. Okay. Um, so, but as Kirk said, this, this, we did receive this 
directly from Senator Cornyn. I, I don't oppose it, but are we going to come back and do it for the delegation as well? Is it a separate bill or standalone? Or? I don't know. I mean, as, you, as you know, we, we are going to meet with the delegation on November 9th um, to talk about legislative issues. So this isn't a bill, as I understand it. It's a request it's a, it's for a request for when the secretary is drawing up the proposed capital budget right. that he include right. um, uh, there, these items. Is there a motion to support the latter? Yeah, the Boonesboro. I was down there, and I know it's everybody in here from Boonesboro will tell you it's bad. So yeah, I'd support the Boonesboro. I prefer. A motion. You want a consensus for the You want a motion? So I think. Motion to approve Boonesboro's uh, reservoir. Is there a second? second? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 What's the second one? The second item, he is submitting a budget request for uh, funds to go towards the city of Hagerstown's burn building replacement or um, improvement upgrades. Uh, as you know, the current burn building is uh, approximately 50 years old. It is used by the city of Hagerstown to conduct training um, training uh, drills. It is also used by other Washington County um, firefighters to um, have dirty burn training, uh, which obviously um, allows them to do in the simulated environment what they would need to do in the real world, enhancing safety um, when they actually are called upon to provide those services. Uh, the project is approximately one and a quarter million dollars. He's asking that $500,000 be included um, from the governor's capital budget. I'm not going to support this at this time. We have our own public training safety center, which we're going to put a burn center in. That's kind of a pitting the city of Hagerstown's five acres center against our 40 acres center. I'd wait, like to wait and see how the progress of our burn center at our station, but I'll leave the other comments up to the commissioners if you want to support or not at this time. Isn't, uh, just a question, curious, isn't the public, our new training centers, well, how many million? 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 million? Isn't that available with the burn center for everybody in the county and other counties? Yeah. Yeah, I don't quite understand stand it then. Uh, if we, we're building, we're spending a ton of money on our own burn center that's available to everybody. Perhaps that request should be for our burn center, not the, the city. I, you know, I'd like to hear from the other commissioners. That's just what I'm seeing there. I, I agree with you all. We're, we're investing all this money in, in this um, training center out here. And okay. Wayne, any thoughts? That's three not to support it at this time. To me, it sounds like what we were attempting to build was a joint center, a joint training center. And um, that just, you know, helps out with cost efficiency. So I, would, I think it would make more sense to have one rather than two separate competing locations. Okay. Thank you. Seeing no consensus, we'll move forward. Kirk, anything else? Uh, one other item, uh, received a communication from MAKO. They are constituting the legislative committee. Uh, they need to know uh, the commissioner's representative and alternate on that committee. Uh, you don't have to decide today, uh, but we will need to let them know uh, by later in November who the uh, representatives are. Last year it was Commissioner Burkett. The alternate was Commissioner Klein. Um, obviously, you can do the same thing, or you can make changes as you feel appropriate. Commissioner, is you okay with Commissioner Burkett being representative? Yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm okay. I'm good with it. Yeah, and uh, and if some Wednesday or whatever that you can't make, and I'll surely fill in for you, and or I'll also go down with you if you like. All right. All right. How's that sound? All right. So we have a consensus for that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Kirk, anything else? Um, as John mentioned, we will be meeting with the delegation um, to discuss legislative initiatives. We will also be discussing them uh, with the commissioners at an upcoming meeting before that, uh, likely on November 2nd. Uh, if the commissioners have any initiatives that they'd like to consider, please let me know, and um, we'll include them on the list. Thank you. Thank you. They can email any suggestions to you. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, Krista, before we go to John, an administrator, sir. Thank you, President Klein. Good morning, Commissioners. Just a few things. I want to remind uh, the board and the public that uh, we will be having a joint meeting with the city of Hagerstown next week. 
uh, I think it'll be at 10 o'clock, and it'll be here in this room. So, um, and that'll be the that'll be the only thing on the agenda that was a week we were not going to meet, but we decided to go ahead and have the joint meeting on that day. Um, just a follow up on some of the comments that were made about our MDOT meeting. I do want to th thank Scott and his team, Monica. I know they did a lot of work on that in our PR department. Um, yeah, I thought it was a, that was a very good, and I appreciate uh, the elected officials and staff coming out and, and citizens coming out to to really talk to and show the state um, about our transportation priorities. As Commissioner Klein mentioned, uh, we did reach out and um, we did reach out to Secretary Slater's office and ask for an additional meeting. We followed that up with a letter. So, so we're waiting to hear from them. Uh, we'd like to have an additional meeting just to talk about I-81. Uh, and, and some of the other priorities that we have. Um, I know it's, it's already been mentioned, but I do want to pass on our condolences to the family of Tim Dorsey, uh, one of our employees who passed away over the weekend. And I'd also like you to keep your thoughts and prayers with our HR director, Larry Etchinson, and his family. Uh, I think that's all I have for you, Tom. Okay, thank you. Um, seeing no more staff comments in the gallery, we'll now move forward with citizens' participation. Anyone on the front row? Please come forward and introduce yourself. Um, right, right there, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Good morning, can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning, my name is Jerry DeWolf. I'm a resident of Keatesville, and I'm also the chairman of the Washington County Republican Party. Uh, only be uh, very brief here. I saw on the agenda the Board of Elections um, as, uh, has a proposal to place a second early voting center uh, downtown Hagerstown at the library. Um, I came to talk to you about that real quick. Um, one, I've been to many meetings of the Board of Elections over the last few years, uh, and I know that they are a very professional uh, a group of folks, uh, dedicated public servants, and uh, the folks in the Board of Elections here in Washington County uh, really uh, are some unsung heroes here in the county. They do uh, some good work. Uh, I do have some grave concern about putting a... Um, the second site in downtown Hagerstown. Uh, we've currently gone through and uh, had a uh, uh, the new headquarters uh, at, um, in um, Virginia Avenue. Um, this is an unfunded state mandate. This is required by the General Assembly to, uh, it's another burden on county taxpayers, uh, truth be told, because now the Board of County Commissioners, you all, are going to have to fund this. Uh, and so um, the reason why I'm here is because uh, the state law now requires that uh, we have two early voting centers between 50 and 100,000. And once we reach the 100,000 mark, which is going to be very soon, uh, we're within a couple thousand from it, uh, we're going to be required by law to have three. And so uh, I'm here, and um, Mayor Lee Kearns will be speaking in a moment. But uh, I would like this uh, Board of County Commissioners to maybe take a pause uh, and think about uh, long term how it'll affect um, these new mandates, the county taxpayers, and the fair and equitable treatment of all voters um, around the county. Uh, we have folks in, uh, you know, Hancock and beyond sometimes have to drive more than a half an hour, uh, you know, to get here to use it if they want to from South County. County, uh, you know, uh, down near Weaverton, it's as much as 38, 40 minutes, things like that. With uh, the, the need for two to three locations, I think it would be fair to have a more uh, representative of the people and around the county. I know this, uh, you know, we have a very uh, big surplus uh, county government now. Uh, you know, perhaps it's, uh, you know, it's unfortunate the county has to share this burden because it is a mandate from the state legislator. I think that they should pay for it, but um, without that, they're not going to do it. So I just uh, came to uh, implore you all to consider Smithsburg Library. Uh, the Board of uh, Elections has identified it as a third location, uh, and I think that if it's good enough for a third location, it's good enough to be the second location. Uh, instead of having two locations within two miles apart, um, it doesn't seem very fair and equitable for uh, the remainder of the county residents. So again, I want to say thank you, uh, all of you. You have a, a, a great work to do. You've done that. And the Board of Elections, again, I just want to go on the record and thank them all on behalf of the Washington County Republican Party and myself for their work. But I do disagree with them on their decision uh, to uh, make the Hagerstown Library a, a second voting location. Thank you. Mary Lee, please you. introduce yourself. Good morning, and Mary, Mary Lee Kearns, Five Stafford Avenue, Boonesboro, Maryland. Thank you guys for letting us speak today. Um, and again, Jerry and Seth have been very actively going to the board of 
elections, meetings, and paying attention. So the intent of the early voting law was to make it fair and equitable um, for citizens of the county to vote. And our opinion is having two locations in or near the city of Hagerstown disenfranchises the voters of South County and the western portion of the county. Um, the argument about picking Smithsburg Library was based on size. Not sure, uh, maybe they were comparison to the voter turnout, early voting turnout in 2020, but I would like to encourage them to maybe not use that as their comparison since that was such a odd year. We weren't having all 52 precinct locations for regular day voting and you know we were in the midst of a pandemic. So um, we do still have available requested mail-in balloting, so citizens can use that. Um, if it, the argument is rides and having a downtown center, I know our central committee has for as long as I've been involved and then some um, years given rides to all any voter doesn't any whatever party affiliation we have offered rides to polls not only on election day but we did schedule appointments to take people to the early voting. Um, if we're going to choose a location that doesn't check all the boxes, we would like to make sure that we did explore all the possible options and ask the Board of Elections to provide us a list of what locations they explored and why they were turned down. And I will say, this is for everything. Um, getting public awareness out there, it is even more of a challenge I feel nowadays because the Herald Mail has priced itself out of circulation to many of our population, especially the older population, as they like to sit and get a Herald Mail in the morning and read it and your coffee, and it's like $300 a year. And I mean, that is insane for these people. So that's where we stand on that. And again, we commend the Board of Elections for their work, but we'd like to see at least not two city locations. We, you know, we're happy with the second location being Smithsburg Library. And kudos on thanking you for Binsburg for the reservoir. I sit on the council down there. We do have out for bid preliminary engineering studies, so we don't even know what the project's going to cost us to replace, repair, and what our options are. So we're still at that stage of the game. And I did like your points about the helicopter museum for the veteran things. Right. Binsburg has a Korean War tank in the park, and my dad served during the Korean War. He wasn't in Korea, thankfully, but he was in the Air Force. And we, my kid, you know, the boys love to play on that tank, and it's a door opening for how to explore history and tell something about that. So I don't know why a helicopter wouldn't, you know, kids say, hey, what's that, and give you a lesson of history, too. So I'll write a letter. Thank you. Say Thank thanks. You. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other citizens in the gallery who'd like to come forward? Thank you, Mary Lee. Thank you, guys. Please introduce yourself in the matter, sir. Good morning. Uh, my name is Carlos Malat, and I am the Uniserve Director with the Maryland State Education Association, assigned to the Washington County Teachers Association. Um, first and foremost, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm grateful to you for, for the time and for your service. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Hart, on your service. Thank you. Um, schools in, in November, um, schools across the nation will be recognizing public education during American Education Week. Um, last week, towards the end of the week, I sent you all a letter with invitation. I don't know if you received it yet, but I thought I would come out and personally invite you uh, to American Ed Week uh, in November. So please accept this invitation to participate in our Educator for a Day event for American Education Week, November 18th, 2021. As respected leaders in our community, you know the value of public education. For this reason, we want you to be a part of our big day to celebrate public education in Washington County. During your visit, you'll experience what, educator, what educators through WCPS experience on a daily basis. Uh, there'd be morning or afternoon duties, staff meetings, professional development, substitute coverage, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The, the experience is truly an educator for a day. Um, our invitation is for you to spend a day at either elementary or secondary school uh, or a partial day at each um, and shadow the educators, participate in their classes and help with lessons and duties. Um, there really is no better time than 2021 uh, to experience life as an educator. So thank you again in advance for your time and your consideration, and thank you for supporting quality public schools in Washington County. Thank Have a good day. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Mr. Malone. Are there 
any other citizens in the gallery who would like to participate? Okay, thank you, sir. Sir. Seeing none. Oh. Sir. Seeing none, our next agenda item is Proclamation Economic Development Week. Please come forward, introduce yourself. Good morning, Commissioners. Susan Small, Director of Business Development for Washington County. Um, I'm here once again with uh, Linda Spence a year later to celebrate our uh, week um, handing out uh, thank yous to our local businesses as part of Business Appreciation Week here locally um, and as Economic Development Week in the state of Maryland. So this year, um, to try and keep a somewhat socially distant event, um, but not all virtual, we decided to do uh, something similar to what Jeep drivers consider being ducked. Um, so we are going to go around to celebrate our businesses by thanking them for planting their roots in our region. We have um, small little gifts that we'll be dropping off to them that have hashtags um, that they can upload photographs to Instagram, Facebook, etc. Tag the county and say that they are Washco proud for being here in Washington County. Um, my team will be out for a week to do this um, and we're going to do just a quick drop, not a full visit um, with proclamations or certificates or anything like that to try and maintain our safe distance and enough to say thank you. So um, I think we have a proclamation sure. to celebrate. Hey, Paul Fry, can we recruit you to come up? We're gonna, since you represent the chamber, we're gonna get you in this picture with economic development. We You didn't know a surprise. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Thank you, sir. Being recruited. On behalf of the Board of the County Commissioners, we'd like to present a proclamation for Economic Development Week, October 25th through the 29th, 2021. <laughs> Whereas economic development efforts have and will continue to improve the economic well-being and quality of life of the county by helping to create and retain jobs that facilitate businesses growth and provide a stable tax base. And whereas economic development requires countywide teamwork with all government workforce development, educational, private business, and various other partners to include the Chamber of Commerce. That's not written right. in there, but I'll put that in there for you. you and, we, and we do it, we'll fix it later. Here. Whereas the economic growth and stability of the state affects all regions and jurisdictions in Maryland and in Washington County is an important component of the state's economic success and will highlight and promote economic development efforts in our county. Now, therefore, we, the Board of County Commissioners of Washington County, Maryland, hereby proclaim the week of October 25th through the 29th as Economic Development Week. We ask the citizens of Washington County to join us in recognizing all the past, current, and future efforts of all those who participate and support economic development, private, and public efforts at all levels, federal, state, county, city, and municipality. Congratulations on the effort of our team. Let's um, move that out of the way. Thank you, <coughs> Katie. And that's Susan. That's yours. And let's go up front and get a picture with the commissioners. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Surprise. <laughs> morning, Paul. Thank you everyone for that presentation. 
Next up, presentation of the 2021-22 Farm of the Year. I guess we have Susan and Leslie. Welcome back. Uh, please introduce yourself for the matter and your guest. Good morning, Susan Grimes, Director of Business Development here with Leslie Hart, uh, Business Development Specialist with Agriculture. So I'm going to let Leslie give the presentation this year. Good morning. This is always an exciting time for me when I get to announce the Washington County Farm of the Year. This marks the 11th year that we have been recognizing a local farm in this community. And this particular farm is located in the Smithsburg area and has been up and running for over 200 years as a family industry, but in this location since the 1850s. Um, so at this time, I would like to recognize uh, Karen and Steve Martin and Ivy Hill Farm as your 2021-2022 Farm of the Year. Yay. Uh, the Farm of the Year showcases excellence in agriculture and promotes a greater understanding of the challenges faced by today's farmers. Production, conservation, preservation, community involvement, and dedication to farming and agriculture is the gold standard for this award. Ivy Hill is on 57 acres, uh, located, of course, in the Smithsburg area. 42 acres are in full production, and 28 acres are dedicated to the greenhouse, market, and home place. Fruit and berry production in the United States amounted to $28.6 billion dollars in 2017 census, and part of Ivy Hill contributes to that. Washington County is the largest apple and fruit producer in the state of Maryland. The farm is owned by Steve and Karen Martin, and their sons, Justin and Tim, also work on the farm. The farm family, the Martin family, has had a presence in the Smithsburg area since the 1850s, and was originally called Hospitality Farm. The name Ivy Hill, and this is kind of a neat little quirk, the name Ivy Hill came from the abundance of poison ivy growing on the hillside. Um, ivy Hill was almost lost um, when the death of John Martin happened, and he had not transitioned the farm yet to his son. And uh, the 26-year-old uh, son, John, was able to raise funds to purchase Ivy Hill. As common, as is common in farming communities, Friends and neighbors of the, farm, of the Martins banded together and refused to bid against John at the farm auction. So the farm was able to stay in the Martin family. The Martins, uh, Ivy Hill Market opened in the 70s, and following 30 years, Ivy Hill has grown in stages and continues to grow. The first commercial cider press was purchased in 1975. Greenhouses to raise vegetables, spring vegetables and bedding plants sprouted in 1907, 1977 and continues to grow with additional greenhouses. And in 1999, the installation of high-tech ultraviolet treatment system to purify, uh, my favorite, sweet cider without affecting its distinctive fresh taste. Steve, born in 1957, and became the farm partner in 1977, married Karen in 1985. The seventh generation helping on the farm is Justin and Timmy. Farming is in the family blood. Dedication and commitment to the fruit industry in Washington County for over 215 years reflects the core requirements for the farm of the year. The Martin family is also dedicated to giving back to their community. Members of the Washington County Farm Bureau active in 4-H and FFA youth and sponsored events, and lifelong volunteers and board members at the Ag Expo and Fair reflect the commitment to the agricultural industry and agricultural youth. Diversifying is key to sustainability for the agricultural industry, and Ivy Hill offers numerous varieties of apples, peaches, cherries, plums, cantaloupe, tomatoes, squash, green beans, sweet corn, bedding plants, hanging baskets, jams, jellies, and of course, cider. Congratulations again to your 2021-2022 to your Farm of the Year, Ivy Hill Farm. From the, the work center. 
<clears throat> first I must say I didn't recognize you at your hat on. Okay. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm a little more dressed up than I usually am. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank you all for presenting us this award. Uh, when I hear the lineage of how we did it over the years, I get kind of emotional. My wife has held with me, and I, I was going to say, last time I was in the courthouse, I came in to get a marriage certificate, and Marty Snook helped me <laughs> trek to the right place. So that's probably the best thing that happened to me in my life with my wife. My parents were innovators, and we've just tried to move on from that. The word that we have is family. Without family, we probably wouldn't pursue this. And uh, the boys have bought into it. And their wives and girlfriends, and a lot of you are my customers. And I appreciate it. And if you have any money left next time you fill up your truck, I got a good place for you to spend the rest of it out there. I hope I have some extra. <laughs> but I, I want to thank you all. It's, uh, we, don't, we don't do it for the awards, but it is awful nice to be recognized. And I thank you all. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You, you had a presence up at Fort Ritchie, and I had some of your cider. Yes. Hannah went up there over the weekend and did is that. that. Is that we, Hannah? Yes, <laughs> that's one of the, the girlfriends of my son. Uh -huh. And, we, you know, the weekends we work real hard as far as, you know, not only Washington County, but Franklin County, Adams County, you know, there's Frederick County, they all come to visit us. And we want you, when you come there, we want you to be part of the operation. We want you to feel like your family. I know John comes in and and some of the others, and, and I really appreciate yours, what makes us. And we just try to stay on the directive. And I also would like to thank you guys. Last year in the COVID thing, we were able, we submitted an application. We were able to, to uh, put some things in to make uh, freezer cases and all that to make convenient shopping there at the farm. And I want to thank you for that because that really helped us uh, move forward and make the next step. Right. And, and it, it was uh, quite a blessing to us, and I want, want to thank you all. You're welcome. That was very, very nice, and I might, might you get you to clarify one thing before you get home. One of the girlfriends of your son. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what he meant. That's not what he meant. You know, I know I'm always going to make a mistake. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just messing I with you. I hope that's not on record. You. Oh, it is. Yes. Yeah. No, about 10,000 people heard of that. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah, that, that is the girlfriend of your son. The, yeah. But Hannah is the one. The Hannah is the one. Hannah is the one. That's right. Thank you. We'd like to take a picture if you want to come on. Okay. Sorry, should I? You'll take care of it. Okay, sorry. Okay. You're welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Again, congratulations to Ivy Hill Farm. Uh, next on our agenda will be the 2022 Washington County Coalition request for financial support. Please come forward and introduce yourselves in the matter. Welcome. Thank you, Commissioners. Good morning. Paul oh. Fry, Washington County Chamber. We're glad we're here. And Jim Kirchival with Greater Hagerstown. Um, so thank you for hearing from us this morning. You know, Commissioner Klein mentioned Economic Development Week next week. And 
the success is based on community stakeholders working together. And certainly that, that's evident. And that's what we're about, uh, the vision of the community coalition, going on our 17th year working together in the community um, for the benefit and prosperity of Washington County. We want to thank you for your past support, and we're here to ask you for your support again in the coming year. Um, we had a successful year this past year. Um, one of the big wins was our downtown stadium and multi-use uh, facility. We're excited about that. And Jim's going to talk about, I know we just have a few minutes, he'll hit the highlights on where we're headed for the coming year, and certainly we'll entertain your questions and feedback. So thank you with that, Jim. Thank you. And again, uh, in respect to the time, I know you guys run a little bit behind here. I, please ask questions if you have anything on the main agenda items. This is, it hasn't been finalized yet. We have a meeting tomorrow at 2 o'clock. I hope we have a representative there from the county as well, but we'll be making a final decision on what the agenda items will be. Just a couple of highlights. We'll, we'll continue to lobby for I-81 and the I-7065 bridge. Um, we also want to support uh, the Western Maryland um, Task Force legislation that is looking to get uh, some funding for the Washington, Garrett, and Allegheny counties. That's led by Senator Edwards. Uh, this is Senator Edwards last year in the, in, uh, the legislature, and uh, we're hopeful that uh, we will see some success there. We want to support that event, uh, that, that item. Uh, for the county, your Medicaid reimbursement item that was brought forward, we'll, we'll continue to advocate for that. Uh, we did um, get a new partner this year in the coalition. The town of Boonesboro has joined us. So uh, we have two towns now with Williamsport and Boon Boonesboro part of it. Boonesboro has some water reservoir uh, improvements they want to look at. Um, as far as tourism items, we got the... Um, the visitor center there in Williamsport, there's some final renovations to do there. There's some gap funding they're looking for. The city is working on an indoor turf facility. They're still finalizing some of the details to that. I believe they're talking about that at this evening's meeting, um, but there will probably be a state request there. Um, we have some items that are still what we call yellow items that are still being worked out, um, and that's in your packet. Uh, online cottage food sales. Uh, this is um, Maryland is one of the states that does not allow the online sales as some of the neighboring states do for cottage foods. These are non-hazardous foods. You mentioned the farm, things like jellies, apple butters, those type of things, baked goods. Um, uh, the city's interested in, in some legislation that may ease uh, the ability for those small businesses. These are businesses that gross less than $25,000 a year to do some online sales. Um, other items uh, there we're looking at are blighted property legislation. I'm not sure anything's going to come forward with that one, but the city is holding a placeholder there. Uh, the Claire Barton Memorial Sculpture, there's a group that's going in front of the city tonight to talk about a sculpture um, to be on the, the um, cultural trail. Uh, Tony Mendez is going to do that sculpture similar to uh, what was done for um, Thomas Kennedy. Uh, back uh, about three years ago, and that that may be a request this year that may go to next year. Um, they also are looking at some legislation. They're trying to identify some ways to ease some of the regulations involved with hiring police officers and requiring them to go through um, a training program again when they've already been through that through their own county or jurisdiction to try to ease some of the labor shortages for not only uh, the city of Hagerstown but for Washington County Sheriff's Department. Um, that may be an item that gets finalized. Uh, I did get word today from Dan Spedden. They're going to delay any discussion on a new visitor's welcome center along I-81. That's a project they'd like to see happen, but they feel this year is premature for that. So uh, they're going to probably push that off to, to a future year. Uh, we have um, settling the right-of-way issues revolving the South County Roxbury Rail Trail. This is not about the trail. This is about asking for the right of way things to be. Yeah, Jim, just done. yeah, I'm sorry, sure. I just want to make that clear. We're not supporting a trail. You're just trying to get funding to determine the right of way <coughs> issues, if there is any or not any. Correct. That's correct. Part that's of. that's that was put forward by uh, the CVB as well. That is just uh, the right of way issues there. That's been a long standing thing. If if they have it, resolve it. If they don't have it, then it it it's there's no thank need to thank pursue you for things that. any further. Um, tannery cleanup may be an item. I know uh, uh, Commissioner Kiefer uh, had mentioned about the Dolman Museum. Uh, right now, it looks like the city has some ARC funds, and they're working with the museum to, re to uh, do a plan for some architectural design. So I'm not sure there'll be any kind of state requirement there, but we kind of have that as a placeholder if it needs it. Uh, we will continue to have an informational sheet on that in the book to kind of highlight what's going on at the museum. 
Um, and then there's some other items that were taken off for next year that you could see on the list that uh, uh, just won't take the time to go over. As far as the what we call a watch list, these are things that we ask the, the lobbyists to be aware of and give us alerts if any issues come up. Uh, police reform legislation, there was a lot of bills that were passed last year in regard to police reform. There are likely going to be some changes and some you know, minor adjustments to those bills uh, this year. So we've asked the lobbyists to keep us informed if anything comes out there. Of course, highway user revenue, trying to get that restored to the county and the, and the municipality is important. Also, um, uh, for Susan and Jill, uh, our enterprise zone legislation, there was a task force that was put together last summer uh, that was looking at possible changes to that. That's been an incentive that's been really good for this county and community and helping you land some big projects. So we're gonna monitor that to make sure uh, they're not at calling for any changes to that incentive that may be detrimental to what we're trying to do here in Washington County. Um, also things like education funding and uh, uh, the Route 11 bridge over in Williamsport's gonna need uh, replaced. So we're kind of trying to keep the town connected to any discussions about that project. Um, again, if there's any questions anybody has, please let me know. Jim, Otherwise, you had mentioned Jim. the Dolman Museum. Could you yep. share again what source of money that they were trying to seek? From what, the, well, the from, what I, from what I understand uh, from uh, city staff I was talking to about this is uh, they believe, the, the, they're looking at the building that they have over um, the old Coca-Cola building and doing some architectural design for that. I believe the city identified some money in the ARC funds from what I understand, uh, and that money will help go to that. So they weren't aware of any specific. I would say I would request. personally like to see, and, okay. and I would take the responsibility of maybe talking to my counterparts on the city council about what possible funding in the Dolman Museum to see about what funding they could seek or, or okay. what monies could benefit them from the state. I don't know why we would say because you're seeking one source of money, let's, let's not look at other sources of money because usually that just makes a request all that much more palatable and easy to approve sure. if there's multiple sources of funding. And I know our board has given free, um, free rent to the Dolman Museum um, so they could have uh, an actual museum that could be visited. And also the city council, as you mentioned, has contributed to um, securing their location on Pennsylvania Avenue. So I think this is something that does have community support. In the last couple of years, we've had it as a, just a, a footnote in our booklet of a project that we have in the community. I'd like to see it moved up to something more actionable this year. Well, you know, with, with uh, we have the group, all the partners vote on the rules of the road at the start of the year, which part of that is just how we, we put agenda items in. So what we need is a specific ask. So um, you, to have an agenda item, you would say, all right, we have X amount of dollars that we want to put into this, and this is going to go to this, pro this part of the project, and that's an amount. If one of the partners wants to bring that forward, I would welcome, you know, uh, Paul and I basically just facilitate this. We're not the ones that set the items or anything. That's, the, that's your group as well as the city council and the others. So if the city or the county want to have a specific request there, just bring that forward, um, if possible, this week. Because, I mean, we, th this, once the agenda gets finalized, it's, it's never in stone. I mean, it's always liquid. Things come up. We can make adjustments as we go. The reason we try to get everything resolved by uh, November is we meet with the delegation on the 9th of November, we go over this list so that they're prepared on what the items are coming forward. And then a lot of times you try to get legislation in early. If you do your bills and submit them before session starts, those bills go through the committees quicker. You kind of get through the committees before things get really hectic and all the bills kind of flood in. Uh, so we've had more success by trying to get in early legislation for agenda items. So uh, Wayne, if that's something that the county wants to move forward with or the city, you know, we're just asking for specific things. I just wasn't aware of any specific item. That's why we have it on the on the yellow list. Okay, I'll work on getting that for okay. you. Yep. Sure. Great. That's important. Commissioners, any other questions or motion to support the funding request? A motion, motion to support the funding request. Second. First and second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks, gentlemen. everyone, and Thank don't forget uh, January 26th is the day in Annapolis. Right now, we're planning everything as we did in the past. We're having a little trouble uh, reserving the big room for our meetings during the day. Uh, it looks like the rooms we typically get in the house building uh, aren't going to be available this year because of a variety of things that are being used for other items. But 
We might have a little adjustment there, but the reception is going to be the same at Calvert House. It should be a good time. Thank you, gentlemen. Next on our agenda, American Rescue Plan funding discussion. Please come forward, Sarah. I think John, introduce yourselves in the matter. Good morning, Commissioner. Sarah Greaves, Chief Good Financial morning. Officer. Here with John Martirano, County Administrator, to have a discussion on the American Rescue Plan Act funds, also commonly referred to as the ARPA funds. Um, the county was approved for ARPA funds of approximately $29.3 million. These funds are to be received in two installments. The first installment was received of $14.7 million in June of 2021. The next installment is expected June of 2022. All funds must be spent by December 31st of 2024. Allowable uses include responding to or mitigating COVID-19 health emergency or its negative economic impacts, to provide essential worker premium pay, to cover revenue loss, or to make investments in broadband or water and sewer infrastructure. As you recall, Washington County did pull the public in July to evaluate um, top priorities from our citizens. The results are below in the order of priority. We had approximately 1,800 respondents, so I do believe we had some good input. 1,800 responses? Yes, uh, specifically 1,835. 1830. Yeah. Oh, 1,839, I'm sorry. Yes, 1,839. So uh, that was a great response. Uh, the number one item was fire and rescue, followed by the emergency operations center, then business assistance, including nonprofits, premium pay, and then water and sewer infrastructure was fifth. Those are your top five right there. Um, and all five of those had over 1,000 votes, um, over 1,000 votes. So I thought that was really great. Um, I did include with the ARF an attachment for qualifying expenditures for the ARPA funds. I just thought we should take a look at that uh, just briefly. It is categorized, um, and we do have different categories here based on you know how the funding can be spent. So the first category shows public health as an expenditure that's allowable. You'll see there are several items under that top category which show examples um, actually for Part of our reporting process, we have to categorize any expenditure that we have in one of these categories. So I wanted to share this because I think it's a, it's a good listing to use if you um, are wondering if um, an expense is allowable uh, because there are a lot of examples here. So number one is public health. The second expenditure category is um, negative economic impact. The third one is services to dis proportionately impacted communities. Fourth is premium pay. Fifth is infrastructure. I do want to be clear under infrastructure, it's, it doesn't mean just any infrastructure. It does specifically talk about clean water, drinking water, you know, water sewer projects or broadband projects. Um, and then six is revenue replacement and seventh is administrative and other. Um, I think, you know, quickly, to understand what the funds can be used for. You know, it's helpful if you ask yourself a couple questions. One, does it respond to the COVID-19 pandemic or is it investment <coughs> in water, sewer, or broadband <coughs> infrastructure? If you answer no to both of those questions, more, more likely than not, it's probably not eligible to be used with the funding. The commissioners did already appropriate some of the funds towards premium pay and a few other items. We do have approximately $10.5 million left from the original allocation that we got in June of $14.7 million. So really today's discussion is to uh, try to get some feedback and have some conversation with the Board of County Commissioners on your thoughts and feelings on the funding and if you have any priorities. And I'll let John speak. If yeah, now it really was to, to give you um, some the general parameters of the ARPA funds, to give you the results of the survey. And, you know, staff has met, and we've talked about a number of, of issues, a number of potential projects. We've gotten some requests from, from some outside organizations for those funds. And as Sarah said, uh, the board has already authorized uh, some premium pay and, 
and some there were some IT projects and some things that, that the board has already approved, and that's included in the in the money that Sarah talked about. Uh, but what we wanted to do today was really just talk to the commissioners about what some of your general priorities are. Uh, if there's some, some some things you want us to look at, uh, I think that at that point staff can go back and and try to identify some projects that maybe fit into those priorities, and we can come back and have further discussions about that. As Sarah said, we we have until December 31st of 2024 to spend the money. So I look at it as I want it to be a deliberate process. Um, you know, my thoughts are, um, you know, we we need to look at at some some major projects that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Uh, maybe some long-term projects. Um, you know, also, some ideas about uh, talking about talking to some municipalities and see uh, because municipalities got funds as well. Yes. And I think that, you know I think they're probably all looking at, at what they're what they may want to spend the money on, and they may have some projects that they may have some money to do, and they may need some assistance from us if we if we see fit to do that. And so I think that those are just some of the general thoughts that I had about. Um, trying to identify projects that, that would have a long-term effect on the community and things that we wouldn't be able to normally do. And I think the, um, so, and again, talking to some municipalities about some projects they may have in mind that we may be able to, they may be able to take some of their money and maybe some assistance from, from us uh, to address some of those. So, Well, you know, one of the things, John, Sarah, that I, uh, that sort of, it didn't bother me, but I see your list here, like, infrastructure is pretty vague it's, there's not a whole lot it qualifies you mean you just don't put a roof on a pavilion for infrastructure it has something you know so there's there's other things to consider there i would i guess my priorities would be following the the input you got that was more input than i thought you'd get 1839 responses mm -hmm. uh, i really did i figured you'd get three or four hundred maybe but uh, for I'll give you a good example, I got a couple phone calls from uh, the number one on the list about needing uh, rescue boats. Their rescue boats are out of service. You know, they could use four boats and, and some odds and ends to go along with that. That's two hundred grand. That seems like a small amount when you got ten million, but this ten million is going to go really quick. So I, you know, priorities for me would be that would be you know rescue, see what they need. You could if they need rescue boats. I'd want you to check into that with with Dave Hayes or Oli or whoever, and then I'd want you to check into uh, the priorities. Would to me would be probably following that list, the top five items that you got all your responses on. I just was a little disappointed I didn't get more. I'd like to see a list next time around uh, from maybe someone like Andrew Eshelman saying, "Here's what I have that will fall in that. This is stuff I can be done by December of twenty. What is twenty twenty four? I can have this done." Here's how much it's going to cost, and have some priorities in all these categories, and then we can sort of digest those priorities. I think also one of the main challenges that we're going to face is that I do know there are a lot of needs, and there are a lot of a lot of deferred maintenance projects that we have that maybe you're aware of, and you know they may not fall in line with the uses of the funding. And so I think that's one of the challenges as a county that we're going to see when we start talking to department heads about different needs that they're aware of. Um, here at the county and whether or not they do fit. Are, are you saying we're not concentrating on the, the money coming next year, right? Just this year? Oh, that's another point. Yeah, correct. I mean, I'm just looking at the 10 million this year or that we have remaining approximately 10 and a half yeah, million. And I thought John year. made a good point on municipalities. I mean, I mean, 10 million seems like a lot of money, but it, it's going to be going You're right. right. It will. I mean, yeah. what's municipalities been holding off? They just don't have the money to finish. Mm -hmm. What have we been holding off? Just don't have the money. It can't be reoccurring, obviously. Right. right, right. It, it can't be, and, and, and I'll just say that obviously we're to, we're talking about ten million, but you know we we anticipate we're going to get the rest of the money next year. So mm -hmm. some of these projects we may identify may you know extend beyond that. So mm -hmm. so I'm not going to limit it to that. Right. I, and I'll just tell you our our thoughts were you know we could have come in just from a staff perspective and, and brought you a list of projects, but the reason we didn't is because we wanted to come and at least have a discussion with you about what your priorities are to make sure we were heading in the right direction. I don't want to bring in a number of projects and then you have to say, no, that's, we're not, those are good projects, but we're not really thinking about that. So, so that's how we got to this point. <clears throat> After today, uh, if the commissioners, and, and I appreciate some priorities and I'll be interested to hear what the other commissioners have to say, staff will go back and try to identify projects within those priorities to bring into you. And there'll probably be more, there'll be more than, than there'll be funding for probably, but, um, 
then we can bring back in, have further discussions about this and try to identify and narrow those down. So, I so think, that's, how, that's how we got to this. I point. think just Wayne had mentioned once before, I don't know if it's just this, I'm just sort of thinking out loud, like a reserve fleet. We need, uh, it, would does something like that qualify? Uh, I think absolutely, according to our categories. Um, and you could even say reserve fleet for rescue squads and ambulances carry COVID patients. So, you know, right. I, I think something along those lines would be very important. That was important to many of our companies. Um, it was in our capital budget. It was removed mm -hmm. um, incrementally and then removed completely. So mm -hmm. I think that's an important, okay. um, important issue. Did the, um, did the amount that you said, did that include what went to the firefighters? Uh, the amount that I said. Premium pay? Uh, yeah, the premium pay. I'm sorry. The, it does, the difference between 10.5 and 14.7. It includes an assumed amount for the okay. payment that has not yet been made. Okay. So it could vary slightly, right. but yes. That includes the um, county premium pay, the firefighters, and some, some additional projects that this board has approved along the way yes. relating to IT. Right. So. It is all inclusive. Yeah. Um, so I, I, just on what Randy just said, I know Ole took me down to South County, and he mentioned the boats, and I think that should be a priority. Um, uh, I agree also that, that the focus maybe should be on those top five. Um, what I would like to see there on number three, where it says business assistance, uh, including nonprofits, can we separate nonprofits and businesses, profit for profit businesses? Can we separate those out? Uh, and were they separated on the list? Uh, the list I, for the survey? The survey list. They were not separate. Um, they were they were combined. Um, but we can separate them can as separate the commissioners. Out? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, you're just yeah, you're talking about business. The reason I think that they right. were combined for profit is businesses we, and, and separated from because mm -hmm. I, I would be more apt to help the nonprofits. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, we can separate. And this and this is just a, this is a list we came up with, and we didn't want to have too many to choose from, so we right. tried to narrow it down. So yeah. I think we put that there to try to cover both, but I, but I understand what you're saying. Well, and, are... and let me just say this. I, I say that because I know that throughout COVID, a lot of the restaurants and a lot of stuff like already got a lot of money throughout COVID. That's the only reason I'm saying that it'd be nice to, to kind of separate those two and, and um, look at them separately. Sure. Well, on his point, could you give more money to would it be eligible like if you gave more money to the our committee that divvies out to the nonprofits? It, could you, um, and like they have seven hundred thousand, could you give them another million? Possibly. I my yeah, first. You're talking about the community funding. Yeah, yeah. community funding. CFO. CUF. Yeah. CUF. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, it would be CUF. providing additional funding opportunities. That's just sort of I'm thinking yeah. out loud. Maybe one way to That's, do it. We'd have to. Right here. Anybody else? I just I don't want to interrupt you. Finish. I have a few comments, but go ahead, Jeff. Oh, thank you, Wayne. I appreciate it. Uh, I do like that top list and separate the business and the nonprofit so we have a better idea. Okay. Um, one of the other questions, I know this is going to take a lot of time and cost to administer. Do we, are we eligible, meaning county government, uh, eligible to receive any uh, compensation for our administrative costs, like what we do with Chris Boggs when we do those uh, grants or Yes, we, time spent. Are we eligible for any reimbursement for our time? Yes, time spent on compliance with this is eligible. Okay. Yes. My other question um, I would like to have our infrastructure projects identified so we have a list. Maybe it's from the priority, but allow us to be able to view which ones are the, maybe the most important that we can have a major effect for this one time money that's coming in. Okay. And, um, I've had at least four municipalities ask if we could help them with different things. So I want us to see if we can consider maybe there's additional funding like Boonsboro with their reservoir. Mm -hmm. I hear it could be as high as four million. We don't know. And that may without an exact Yeah, I don't know what amount that you got, but can we help them and get that project completed where we're reaching out helping all of Washington County, including the municipality. So I'd like to see if we get any projects suggested from any of the nine towns. And okay. I don't want to forget tourism to some degree because that goes to some of these businesses that if they have tourism, we have restaurants finally getting people and getting back up to full speed. So I don't want to completely 
forget tourism. And we did help them during COVID, but we still want to see if there's a need to help maybe CVB and things like that. So there's some of my thoughts on what I'd like to see brought back. I can see this being a pretty extensive listing. So when we do provide this yeah. to the commissioners, do you want staff to provide it in a priority order or no, just uh, bring it right all on. to the just table? That would be your priority. We'd like to just to sort of make it our priority, I guess. Very good. That's why I'm asking. I just yeah, want to be clear. Yeah. And I'll just follow up. I mean, that's why I mentioned earlier. I mean, I have had some preliminary discussions with some of the municipalities about some of the projects and some of the things that they were thinking about using their funds for. So we'll be able to help that. Uh, we did receive, a, the commissioner did receive a specific request from CBB for some money relating to that. And I think you may have all seen that along the way. So uh, so that's just another option. So I know Commissioner Keefer got some. Just a, a few comments and thoughts that come to my mind. I do agree with the top five, especially since that was the input given to us by the citizens. When I suggested that we do a survey, I didn't realize we would have 1,800, more than 1,800 respondents, but I think that's also our way of being mindful that it's their money we're spending, and it's the money we're spending that they have yet to earn to pay taxes on. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's their future obligation. So we should be mindful of what the public wants. I believe that's important. Fire and rescue and those emergency operations, line items, requests that we might have are very important. Uh, I think the reserve fleet bringing that back online and, and also incorporating that into our capital budget for years past when this COVID money runs out, I think is important. So reestablishing that. Um, water and sewer infrastructure, I think is also an important issue because that affects our ability to grow as a community, to grow our tax base. If we can't provide water or sewer to some requests that we have come in, we know that's a struggle many times. Uh, I know Boonesboro has their project. The town of Hancock is trying to work on their project to actually have a sewer system to move on past the lagoon system that they have now. And, and that bottlenecks and, and is a stranglehold on the town of Hancock for its economic development. Same thing in all over the county. So water and sewer, I think, is important. Unfortunately, that's the only type of infrastructure. It doesn't look like we can put roads into that category right now for ARPA funding. That's always important. But... Um, Water and sewer, I think, is important. When it comes to premium pay for essential workers, I think we've checked that off the list. Um, so maybe we are only looking at four categories at this point since we've already covered the premium pay. A question I have for premium pay, I know it was brought up. I want to bring it up now since it's on our agenda topic of discussion, but maybe um, we need a more complete answer. I know I've been contacted by some firefighters that have dual roles for both county um, city of Hagerstown and other counties in the state of Maryland where they work and um, some of their pay that they received from the city premium pay was held against them for receiving county funding but monies that some firefighters may have received from working out of county like Montgomery County for example that premium pay that they've received was not held against them so I hope that we can get clarity on that we don't need to write right now I know you were out last week John yeah, and I, I was out. And actually, Sarah was out, and Dave was out too. I, Dave sent us something just this morning with a spreadsheet, and we are going to meet hopefully this week to talk about that, uh, so we can have we'll have a better explanation for you, and we'll get with all the commissioners on that. Okay. So we are. So maybe we're only looking at the top four items uh, if we leave out premium pay, since that's already been covered. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and Sarah, just one last thought for me. I don't think I'd bring anything to us that couldn't feasibly be funded or, or finished by. 2024. Right. Yeah, so as we evaluate the projects that are that are proposed to us, if we see it doesn't fit within the ARPA guidelines, don't even bring those to the table, right? I mean, okay. One other comment, if I could, when we talk about nonprofits, um, one of the demographics that was hurt most by COVID was senior citizens, um, just their vulnerability to COVID and, and everything that went along with that. So I would prefer special attention when we look at nonprofits, all nonprofits, you know, have helped in some way, but that was a population in particular, senior citizens that was affected by COVID. Mm -hmm. So I think senior in those organizations should probably be a highlight okay. of any nonprofit funding. Okay. Commissioners, any other comments? If not, Susan, do you, I mean, Sarah, do you have direction to move forward? I, I do yeah, have direction. I think we do. And one other thing, I, and it's on the list and nobody really brought it up, but uh, we just didn't get down that far, I think, but broadband's another thing, another thing that's, mm -hmm. that's a possibility under this. Um, now, of course, the federal government's still looking at, you know, its whole infrastructure bill you were talking about. Um, so hopefully there'll be some money there and some broadband. But I know that some of our local broadband companies are looking, uh, working with the state on some potential grant funds. 
Uh, there may be a, a county match needed on that to expand broadband into more of the rural area. So that's a, that's another possibility that um, you know if they're going to extend broadband, be, you know, into into some of the parts of the county that they'd never be able to do without uh, some of those grant programs from the federal and the state government. There may be a there may be a county match there that they may be coming to us at some point to ask that. So that's a possibility too. That's right. Um, right to use those funds. Any other questions? I'm good. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Appreciate it. Next on our agenda is the birthday party for Mr. Newman. I mean, uh, Mr. Newman, the rental assistant. You have a birthday today, don't you, sir? Yes, sir. Happy birthday to you. We'd sing Gordy, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we'd sing, but we'll wait. Being here is the best gift possible. Well, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for coming in on your birthday, folks. Oh, you that was corny. Yourselves in the matter. Good morning. Again, Rachel Souter, Senior Grant Manager, Office of Grant Management. Uh, Jordy Newman, President and CEO of the Washington County Community Action Council. Uh, you may remember that we were just here a few weeks ago providing a status update on the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, um, which is a grant that was issued from the Department of Housing and Community Development to ensure stability for families and individuals at risk of and currently experiencing homelessness due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we have been awarded in May $9,441,971. Um, we have been notified that the Department of Housing and Community Development has an additional $24.5 million that is being made available to continue ERAP activities. And we must submit a letter of interest to be considered for funding. Now, the Community Action Council has projected that our funds will run out, the current funding will run out by the end of February 2022. And between March and the end of the grant period, which is September, we could use an additional $5,571,500, which would enable us to serve 1,534 households in Washington County. So we are here to request approval to submit the letter of interest. Commissioners, any questions and not a motion? Is that a motion on motion to approve that? If it's, you yeah. need a motion. Yeah. Motion to. Yeah. Second. Okay, this is a motion to accept the funding if awarded to as well. And to approve a letter of submission approve for. A letter yeah. and to accept letter funding once approved. Accept the funding, right. Award it. Yeah. I have first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Etchison, please introduce yourself in the matter. Morning, lady and gentlemen. This is Larry Etchison, Director of Human Resources for Washington County. Coming for you uh, again regarding the change recommended change to our short-term short -term disability plan uh, revision. Just one moment to read through why it is very important for us to do this. Consistently administering end of employment to all employees who cannot perform their position's essential job functions with or without reasonable accommodation and who have exhausted all FMLA paid sick leave and short-term disability benefits shifts the ongoing health care cost burden to either the employee via long-term disability benefits, personal assets, et cetera, or potentially to federal or state-funded programs, SSDI, Medicaid, ACA, et cetera, versus the county citizens and taxpayers. Therefore, I'm requesting it be prudent for us to adopt the short-term disability policy revision as follows. Please note that the Director of Human Resources, with the county administrator's review and concurrence, will administer end of employment actions to employees who are unable to perform their position's essential job functions with or without reasonable accommodation and who have exhausted all FMLA, paid sick leave, and short-term disability plan benefits following the issuance of a 30 calendar day notification via United States Postal Service certified mail. Motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Next on the agenda, rescind bid award. Brandy and Dave Mason, I believe, are next. Please introduce yourselves in the matter. Good morning, Commissioners. Brandy Noggle, buyer in the purchasing department. Dave Mason, Deputy Director, Environmental Management, Salt Waste. The first recommendation I have for you this morning is the resend for bid award INTG 20 dash 0062 for one Bobcat compact track loader. Move to relieve Bobcat of Hagerstown from the contract without prejudice for the purchase approved by the board on August 10th for the lease purchase of one Bobcat for $74,053.20. After the award and the final lease documents were prepared, it was discovered that the submitted documentation didn't include the interest um, or any fees associated to the leasing of the equipment. Therefore, the cost of the five-year lease would be $81,909.60. What we need to do is resend this award so we can award it for the correct pricing. So, basically, we approved our own price. Yeah, the documentation that was submitted was inaccurate as we look at Well, how at does further. the new price compare with anything else in the future or anything else? Like, we, we approved like 74, now it's 81. This is just curious questions. I'm, I'm lost here a little bit. What it, can you get it for less money somewhere else? Or now that the prices went up, is how's that put us in a bid with somebody else? So this was priced through a source well contract, was which is a cooperative contract. It's very aggressively bid. And when we initially set out for this, right. um, Dave did look at other options, and this was by far the cheapest. And it still is. Yes. Okay, that's what, that was a, a summary. Yeah. They just questions? simply didn't include all the fees and interest when they sent us. The I got it. Commissioners, any other questions? Motion, Motion to, to approve. approve. There's a first. Is there a second. second? I have a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank next you. Next up. The, back. Thank you. Um, the next, rec next recommendation is for the Intergovernmental Cooperative Purchase, INTG 21-0062, for one Bobcat track loader. Move to authorize by resolution for the Department of Water Quality to purchase lease one Bobcat track loader at the total cost of $81,909.60 and to utilize the source well contract, which was awarded to Bobcat of Hagerstown. Again, this is to correct the original pricing um, and award the new pricing to Bobcat. Motion to approve. Second. First and second, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. You're up again. Contract award, Brandy and Ms. Dreischelman. Again, Brandy Noggle, buyer in the purchasing department. Andrew Ashwin, Director of Public Works. The next recommendation I have for you is the contract award 2022-13, number two heating oil. Move to concur with the recommendation of the Washington County Public School Board to award the contract for Washington County's number two heating fuel to the responsive responsible bidder of AC&T of Hagerstown, Maryland, with the bid factor of 0.1795 per gallon for tank wagon deliveries. Washington County government, as well as the city of Hagerstown, competitively bid heating fuel requirements with the Washington County Public School Board. At, the, at its meeting on Tuesday, September 21st, 2021, the Washington County School Board awarded its contract for tank wagon loads to the responsive responsible bidder of ac and out of Hagerstown, Maryland. The contract period was effective September 21st, 2021, ending July 31st, 2022, and this may be renewed for three additional consecutive one-year terms at the discretion of the Board of Education. Funds are budgeted um, in the using department's uh, operating budget. Commissioners, thoughts? Motion to approve. Second. First and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. <clears throat> Next, Brandy, I believe you're back. Mr. Zane. Again, Brandy Noggle, Byron, the purchasing department. Uh, excuse me, Zane Rowell, Deputy Director of Highways. My last recommendation this morning is for the bid award, P-2022-0052, 
POR 1518 for the bulk delivery of road salt. Move to award the contract for the purchase and delivery of road salt to the responsive, responsible bidder, Cargo Incorporated of North Olmsted, Ohio, who submitted the price of $76.38 per ton. On September 1st, 2021, the county issued an invitation to bid for bulk road salt. The salt was purchased, will be purchased on an as need basis by the county to maintain uh, the salt and snow removal. The county uses an average of 15,000 tons of road salt annually. The contract period is tentatively to begin October 1st, 2021, ending April 30th, 2022. The above recommendations are for the county requirements only. The city of Hag Hagerstown shall make its own independent award. The county <coughs> guarantees no minimum or maximum on this contract. The invitation to bid was also posted on the county website, the E-Maryland Marketplace Advantage website, and, lo and the local newspaper. 27 companies downloaded the document, and we did receive seven bids for this. There is funding available in the highway's uh, operating budget for this commodity. We have a question for you. Yes. What was the cost of a ton a year ago? Uh, 59.48. And a year before that, what was it? You know, less than 59? It no, it was, it, it was a little bit, bit more. more. Yeah. It's yeah. been coming down the last but it, three years, it with the exception of this year. Now yeah, it's going it all the way. Commissioners, any comments, questions? No, just a curious question. Uh, do we use? Do we have any left over from last year? We do. All of our our district domes are full. So when we start this year, we'll just be filling up the Hagerstown gotcha. salt area. But we buy the same every year, the same amount tonnage. Typically, depending on, on weather, uh, right. is what dictates. All right. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. A first and second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next up, bid award, lease purchase, tart machine. Mr. Curry. Please introduce yourself and the matter itself. Good morning, Rick Curry, Director of Purchasing. Good morning. Hey, Mason, Deputy Director of Solid Waste. Subject before you is bid award PUR 1516 lease purchase for one new TARP machine. Recommended motion move to award the bids response to responsible bidder who submitted the low bid. Also be contingent upon the lease agreement be approved by the county attorney's office. In the RF, it, takes, it talks about also the company being in, within good standing, good standing with the Department of Assessment and Taxation. The company has already fulfilled that obligation, so that does not apply in this um, purchase. The invitation bid was advertised on the various medias, also on the websites. You see the number of individuals download the document. The TARP machine is a mandatory uh, process that the landfill has to do, do since 1992. Funds are budgeted. You can also see the uh, lease documents and also the brochures that the vendor submitted along with their price proposal. Are there any questions? Commissioner's thoughts, comments? Motion to approve. Second. I have first and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Budget Adjustment, Parks, Recreation. Good morning, Andrew Good morning. Eshelman. Um, here seeking a motion to approve a budget adjustment in the amount of $1,365,000 for state, local parks, and playground infrastructure funds received in FY22, and a second adjustment for uh, reducing 265000 from the capital budget for competitive grants budgeted in the CIP plan that will not be received. So if you recall, on um, July 20th, 2021, I was here before you, and the commissioners approved a project funding schedule for $1.5 million in state, local parks, and playground infrastructure, LPPI funds. And of that, it included $1.365 million for county projects, so this budget adjustment is required to add that funding to the capital improvement plan. On the flip side, um, 
there were two county parks and recreation CIP projects that were budgeted to receive program open space funding, um, but those projects weren't in the final uh, cut and the annual program, and so therefore we require a budget adjustment to remove the funds from the CIP budget. Also, a competitive state Maryland Heritage Area grant was applied for the Antietam Water Trail. That was included in the budget um, and was not received, and so we need to take that into account. So on one hand, we have the LPPI money that we're going to be adding and then adjusting for some competitive grants and things that were not received. Um, and so on one hand, there's a positive change and a negative, and the net change overall is $1.1 million. Basically, we have $1.1 million left over that wasn't used. Is that a good summary? Basically, we're netting an, another $1.1 million to the Parks and Recreation CIP plan for FY22. Comments, questions? So you're not saving, you're adding to. I don't know it's saving. I mean, the, the LPPI money was 100% state money, so this isn't taking into account local funds. This is just what the net difference would be for the grants that were in the CIP plan. So the LPPI money, they didn't notify the local jurisdictions that was going to be passed until kind of, I think it was May or so, which is after we had our, our uh, CIP plan set. And so that's why it wasn't in, included in the approved CIP budget. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. First and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Right. Thank you, Andrew. Next up. Andrew Ashwin, points. Director of Public Works. Rick Curry, Director of Purchasing. So before you enter government of cooperative purchase, installation of playground equipment, INTG 210069 for Parks and Recreation Department. Recommended motion moved by resolution parks and recreation department to purchase and have installed playground equipment at various parks within the county from playground specialists incorporated of Thermont, Maryland, and to utilize the Houston Galveston Area Council contract number PUR 11 20 for the total sum listed below, and also to purchase and have installed various playground equipment from Compan Incorporated of Austin, Texas, and to utilize the Omnia contract. 201700 for a total sum listed below. You can see a breakdown of the parks and the vendors and the amount that will be spent in each one of those parks. The Code of Public Law does allow this board to participate in this in this uh, purchase because of the leverage of the economy of scales that has been leveraged with this contract. It would be beneficial for the county to utilize this contract as opposed to soliciting and doing the bidding process. You can see the quotes that were submitted from the vendors for each park. And are there any questions? Motion to approve. Second. First and second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, cardiac device. Mr. Chisholm, Allison, please come forward. Introduce yourselves in the matter. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Allison Hartshorn, Grant Manager, Office of Grant Management. Dave Chisholm, Deputy Director, Operations Emergency Services. Good morning. This morning, we're here to move um, to approve the submission of the FY22 Cardiac Device Grant application through the Maryland Institute of Emergency Medical Services Systems in the amount of $27,617.61 and accept awarded funding. Um, the Division of Emergency Services was notified by the manufacturer of the Life Pack 15 cardiac monitor defibrillators that they will be, um, they have discontinued a replacement part and should, um, and should a failure of the part occur in the existing monitors carried on various emergency response apparatuses in the county, um, that would be the, that would make them inoperable and unrepairable. At the October 13th, 2020 Board of County Commissioners meetings, 
Um, two of these four devices were approved to be replaced. Two remaining devices still need to be replaced. The new devices funded by this grant would replace the existing devices that are assigned to EMS 1812 Sharpsburg and 1801, which is Deputy Director Chisholm's vehicle. The Office of Grant Management has reviewed the grant funding guidelines. There's a dollar for dollar match associated with the funding request. Um, the fiscal impact, it will provide $27,617.61 for the Division of Emergency Services. And the match will come from the Emergency Services Operating FY22 budget. Um, did you have anything you wanted to add? This is just me returning a year later to finish off this project if we get this grant. So. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, first and second, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Next up, Maryland General Assembly legislation requiring multiple early voting centers. Mr. Jackson, please come forward, introduce yourself and the matter. Good morning, Barry Jackson, Deputy Director of the Washington County Board of Elections and uh, Board President Marty Lum sends his regrets. Uh, he wanted to be here, but he was not able to. Um, so new election law in, in the state of Maryland that takes effect on October 1st requires that counties or local boards that have uh, active voter registration between 50,000 and 100,000 are now required to have two uh, early voting centers. Previously, we were only required to have one. And so uh, as of today, our active voter registration was 98,946. So we're 1,100 away from 100,000. Once we get over 100,000, we'll re be required to have three. The, um, the date that the State Board of Elections uh, cuts off that number to make their determination on how many we're supposed to have is October 26th. So that's coming up next week. We're not going to hit 100,000 by next week. Uh, so we're only required to have two. Uh, in the county for the 2022 election. Uh, however, since we are so close to 100,000, the Washington County Board of Elections decided that we probably should go ahead and have a third one. Um, now, in order to do that, uh, we have to get approval from the State Board of Elections to have an additional one, more than we're required to have. Um, certainly, that's a formality. They would you know, never not approve an additional one. Uh, but they also require that the county government <laughs> approve that third one as well. Um, we had budgeted uh, in our FY22 budget for three early voting centers. And so having a third early voting center will have no fiscal impact on the county because it's already in the budget. And so the purpose for me to be here is just to seek approval from the Board of County Commissioners for the Smithsburg Library as our third early voting center in Washington County. Um, the Washington County Board of Elections last week approved um, the election center on 17718 Virginia Avenue as our number one early voting center and the Washington County Free Library at 100 South Potomac Street in Hagerstown as our second early voting center. And so we're just here to just get that approval for the Smithsburg Library as our third early voting center. Barry, so I'm going to, I'm not happy with this, but I guess, do, I guess just cut to the chase. We don't have any say at this point the way you're presenting. All we're saying is, okay, it's good for a third one for next time around. We're not going to have three this time. So nothing we can say, now legal too, will stop us from having a second voting center as the Washington County Library? Correct. So we have no say over that? Correct. We don't need approval from the county government. I, I, it would be wonderful for me to know how that how you all came up with the second pick as the Washington County Library. When there's it put it right together and we got a, a county from Dargan to Hancock. I, I don't get it, but I mean that's Yeah, I don't I don't support this second location <coughs> and I think the election board ought to go back and reconsider that. Uh, place two miles close to each other is not appropriate. Uh, I have another question too before I get more elaborate. How are people registered now? Just for public information, how does someone become a registered voter? Oh, how do they get registered? Yes. We have a number of ways you can do that. We have paper applications. We have those uh, in our office. We also have them in all state and county uh, offices around the county. 
uh, libraries have them, post offices have with them. With the driver's license renewal program too? Or? Uh, if you register, or if you uh, go to the MVA, it's an automatic uh, voter registration so system. one there. of the reasons we're getting such a large number right away. And I remember before we even have an early voting center, we were, it took us five plus seven years to even find a current site we have today. And that was mandated by law and we violated the law probably not having that in place. So why then would we want to use the library as a second site when it's only two miles away? And I've got numerous complaints on that. Hancock, Smithsburg, even down in Boonesboro. I mean, I just don't support this second location being so close. There's bus rides out to the Virginia Avenue site. Um, my wish is the lecture board reconsiders that. Now I yield to Mr. Downey to verify the accuracy or the information that we do not have approval or denial of that second location. It falls to the local board of elections to make a determination as to what the appropriate site is for the early voting center, and they then have to get approval of the state board of elections. If Since you want to have an additional early voting center, the local governing body, the board of county commissioners, has to agree has to say yes there can be a third but again the citing of that would be up to the local board of elections i would just say that um since we're not required <coughs> to have one a third one then um saving taxpayers money would be i think a good thing and um so i but i i have to agree that i don't know why we have two so close to each other would be my suggestion to remove the library make Smithsburg the second location is, is it too late for that it is it is too late so as much as we've cooperated with our local election board it's too late to make any adjustments yes if I could say a few comments and I want to preface my comments with exactly what Jerry DeWolf had said thank you to the Board of Elections for the good work that you do do you know during the last year or so when there were questions about election integrity, I had confidence in our local board of elections because I know you all personally, and, and I have confidence and faith in you. With that said, I find it very discouraging that after we've been over backwards for our local board of elections to buy them a former grocery store so they could have the location that they needed in a location that they requested, that this would be perfect. We, we bought and we expended to close to $2 million. I'm looking at our, our staff, um, close to $2 million to buy that location, to outfit it for you, to paint the building, to put new carpet down, everything. That's quite an expense for our taxpayers already. And when I went on my tour of the Board of Elections office on National Voter Registration Day, I remember how it was shared with me that at your Mayo Conference, Maryland Association of Election Officials, you were the envy of your other counties with how great of a location that we have here in Washington County. Quite honestly, if you were going to choose the library as your early voting site, maybe we should have left you in downtown Hagerstown, but that's not the location you want it to be at that time. Um, I, I'm looking at the map here. I asked for a map of our transit from our public works department. And, and quite honestly, all of those areas that are mentioned, even the location of Smithsburg, are served by the county commuter. We have people in South County that aren't served by the county commuter. They can't get to an early election site, but all three of the locations you chose, those citizens have that option of getting on a county commuter and going to one central location site for that area served by the county commuter. We have areas down in South County that I think are not being served with this plan. We have people in the western part of the county. If you live in Hancock, where I live, the only way you can get to Hagerstown without going into another state is Interstate 70. And if you're 80 years old, you don't drive on the interstate. You, you don't like to drive on the interstate. You, you don't feel comfortable to. Some do, but many don't. And, and the citizens I've heard from are concerned about a drive or something like that. So we put a lot of citizens at a disadvantage with a location like this. That's upsetting to me. And, you know, I just think, again, I go back to the cost that we have done already. We've borne already with, with the Virginia Avenue site. I hope I don't regret that. But I know that was unanimous vote, and we were very proud to to have that location. But I, I think I think you're thumbing us in the eyes with a, a, a second location so close to the first. Um, I'm disappointed. Yeah. Is it my turn? 
You would think you would think with a decision like that, they would that you would at least ask or you know offer ask for advice or thoughts or opinions or that's all. Uh, just to summarize um, the months of work that were put into deciding where our early voting sites were going to be, um, the new law has guidelines that we have to take into account. And uh, number one on that list is accessibility of the early voting center to historically disenfranchised communities, including cultural groups, ethnic groups, and minority groups. And so um, it was pointed out to the Washington County Board of Elections that there are uh, voters in Hagerstown who find it difficult to get out to Virginia Avenue. And so that was one of the reasons why we thought the board, again, I'm talking about, I'm speaking on behalf of the board, one of the reasons why the board thought that it would be a good idea to have one downtown. Now, having said that, the Washington County Free Library contacted us and offered the facility to us. They were certainly willing for us to be there, which is not usual. Uh, we looked out in the western part of the county. We looked down in South County. Um, we were not able to find a location in any of those places. Uh, I will say Hancock, uh, there's no way we could have, even if there was a facility available, that we could put one out there because it would not meet the requirements that we have. 80% of the voting population lives in the 10 mile radius of Hagerstown. And so we have to, another part of our requirements, and Kirk can back me up on this, is we have to have uh, the early voting centers have to be within five miles of 80% of the voting population. So the only way we could do one in Hancock is if we had already met those requirements and then did another one out there. Okay. Now, I would say for the 2024 election, once we do have to have three, because we will be over 100,000 registered voters soon, uh, we will be required by 2024 to have three. Then we can come back to you commissioners and say, hey, we've got another site in Hancock. That could be our fourth early voting center. Okay. Barry, I need to interrupt just for a second. Mm -hmm. If Smithburg qualifies as a third place, why didn't it qualify as a second place? Did it qualify as a second place? Would it have qualified for a second place? The only reason we would say it wouldn't qualify as a second place is because it's a smaller facility. So it would be difficult to have <coughs> thousands of people showing up for early voting there as opposed to where we have it at Virginia Avenue. Um, it's really only able to support maybe hundreds of people coming every day as opposed to thousands. It still makes no sense to me. If, if Smithburg could have been two, Virginia Avenue one, and then something number three. Uh, I'd see, that's, that's where I think this thing is getting twisted. Right, but and, and what, what the board's saying is Smithburg couldn't be number two. So if we were only going to have two, we would still have it in Virginia Avenue and at the library downtown. It wouldn't be in Smithburg. So we're coming to you asking if you would prove making Smithsburg the third early voting site. Well, we better approve that before it changes to uh, I'm not going to approve anything Potomac today. I, th I think I th this is wrong. I don't care what. Th I'm not going to support the second. I'm, I'm disappointed we spent over $2 million and we weren't consulted on the second site before you made this decision. I'm very, I'll just put the word disappointed, extremely disappointed. I, I was going to say, I just want to mention one thing. You made a comment that three early voting sites were in your budget. I have no quite, I have no reason to doubt you on that, but we haven't looked at that. So I would, I would think we want to look at that to make sure that it's included. But I, my, my advice is do we have a legal challenge. Can we take the court and stop this second site? Because it looks like the people who represent the citizens here don't agree with it. Uh, Mr. Downey, I, can we table this? Do we get that information? Sure. Do you want uh, let's see if we that. can take some legal action to change the second site. <clears throat> I, I just I wouldn't be for it just simply on it's not necessary. Why spend the money? It's not necessary. I don't need. I don't know. And you're correct. It's another mandate that we weren't funded by the state to have a second or third site. Yeah. Okay. But I I don't I don't see why we would do legal action. Well, I, they're saying they are required by law to do the second site, and that would. That is correct. I said so. Unless we do some type of legal challenge, the second site goes through. Well, but there's nothing that we can do to change that. I don't so. know. That's why I'm asking legal to see if there's some 
to explore it in my table today because I'm not voting for the third site at this time based on what Mr. Montrano just said. Commissioner's uh, direction. May I offer something else to you? We have deadlines that we need to meet. And so uh, when it comes to submitting our early voting sites to the state board, so at some point we're going to have to meet that deadline. So. Um, well, it looks like, you, no offense, Matt, it looks like you don't need us. It, you know, why didn't we vote? If we have to vote on the third, why didn't we have to vote on the second? Just a curious question. Again, the law, and Kirk can back me up on this, the law states that we are required to have two. We submit those early voting sites. We, we, the board. Oh, for now, we're now three. We're required to have two. So next time, if you need three, we won't need to vote on that. You'll be, you'll pick your third one. That is correct. Okay. Again, it could end up on South Potomac Street, so we better be careful. I will just say again, we, we understand we understand where you're coming from. Uh, we again, I speak on behalf of the board. Um, these are the sites that were available, so these were the sites that we selected. Um, there are other sites that we're looking at for 2024. For instance, the Public Safety Training Center. Uh, we've had discussions, just brief discussions with emergency services about using them. It's not going to be available in 2022. Had it been available, that would have been one of the ones we would have selected because it would service the folks in South County. It would certainly, I mean, we haven't seen the plans for it, but we assume it's a nice big facility and probably would work for us. So this is for 2022. We're going to revisit it in 2024. So just, I mean, just, I, think, I think everybody understands it, but just to clarify, I'm looking at the law right now. So... If, if, you, if the county has at least 50,000 registered voters, but fewer than 100,000 are required to have two early voting centers. If it's between at least 100,000 and less, fewer than 200,000, you're required to have three. A county can have an additional one at the request of the local board and the local governing body, which is the county. So that's why you're here today. Correct. Because since we haven't reached 100,000, you're not required by law to have three. Gotcha. But if you want to establish a third one, county would have to agree and then the state would have to agree to that which you mentioned right and that's why i say in 2024 when and i'm sure we will be required to have three early voting centers the right. board's going to select those three but we would certainly be willing if you Are all you those, the, the next, they change the for next, 2024 the site could change it, they could change in 2024 yes that's correct it's not a permanent so, no. right so I, the, would, I, the, I would make the motion that we deny the um request for a third site funding a third site for a second I would second that at this time. And I, I would just highlight the expense that we undertook to have an excellent early voting site in Washington County. The expense that we didn't take, our taxpayers took already. Um, second. Have first and second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Four O. Oh. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. It just, just, just to wrap it up, the, the one thing, no later than six months, no later than six months before primary election, the local board, which is talking about the election board, each county shall, subject to the approval of the state board, designate each voting early voting site in, in the county. So, so within six, so that's the local board with the approval of the state board. All right, they would designate those sites. So that's how we got to that. Okay. With that there. being said, that's our last agenda item. I need a motion to go into closed session. Motion to go into closed session. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye.